Yeah, yeah. Code of Many Colors comes out Friday. Can you talk some about the inspiration behind this idea? I mean, we see it even parts of it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always resonated with the story of Joseph and um, Code of Many Colors and God giving him these dreams, right? They get him in trouble with his brothers. And I remember my counselor a while back. Um, I'm a big dreamer. And I've also had very heavy things prophesied over my life at a young age, being in the church, and things that are coming to, to fruition now. They're not exactly things you can just share with everybody, the things that have been spoken over me. And so sometimes carrying dreams can kind of be weighty. Um, that would be kind of the underlying way, or the underlying reason I really resonate with this story. But the truth is, for all of us, we're all clothed in this, in a sense, coat of many colors. We're all favored by our Father. And um, I thought it was a cool way to just to write a song and incorporate colors. Red was the blood that saved me. White was the light that pulled me from the dark. Gold was the crown he places on our heads, right? Reminds us who he is and who we are. And, um, and then it kind of became um, like House of Miracles a few records ago. I want to make sure that my record has a strong concept and that other songs can find themselves in... Um, and within that concept and so that this this record is largely about identity and who we are as children of God And I think it's going to give people faith and confidence to rise up in that the bridge of Code of Many Colors like, I wear my coat everywhere I go, you know, I want the world to know and I, I don't think Christians should be sitting back and just you know Yes, saved by the grace of God and you know, just not trying to mess it up I think people need to step into the confidence of who God's called us to be and uh, to, to live on a mission and um, so I am hope that this this record does that for people. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. He covers us, right? And it's like there's a beautiful picture of when he, the father places that coat over us. Kind of like how the table covered Ms. Ms. Mephibosheth's brokenness. I think his coat covers our scars. Not that we have to be our pain. It, it covers our past. Not that we have to be, um, that has, stuff has to be hidden. But it's like you put on that coat and... Uh, you might have been through the pit and been through a whole lot of things, but you are dressed as royalty, you know? And have y'all ever put on something really, really nice and you kind of got more confident? Y'all are like, I'm, I'm walking a little different, you know? I think that's when people step into the identity of who, of who he's truly called us to be. Um, we don't walk with our, in, the, in, with, in light of our scars and what we've done. We, lighten, we, we walk in the light of who he's called us to be. And carrying those things with us, realizing that he'll turn those things into a testimony. He doesn't waste anything, right? So that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. My record will prove that I don't have a favorite genre. Um, and as soon as I pick one, then I'm like, okay, y'all, I've been... Okay, so you asked about Count em, the rock and roll kind of sound. And, um, which is so funny, I just saw a message on Instagram the other day that kind of got under my skin, and I was like, all right, Lord. Try not to reply, so I just privately DM'd him, and he's like, this doesn't sound like worship music. I was like, define worship music for me, then, you know? It's too dark, or what, I'm like, and the minor chords, and... I think that we need all kinds of expressions of worship is worship is our love expressed to God, right? I just happen to want to express it in that rowdy rock and roll way for a song, for one song, you know? And one day, actually, the cool thing about that song is we were walking out of the studio to go to lunch. 
and one of my producers, Jacob Suters, uh, stopped by the keys that were right by the stairs, and he goes, Jin Jin, Jin Jin, Jin Jin, Jin Jin, Jin Jin, Jin Jin, those little chords you hear on the very end of the song. That's how the song started. And I was like, I've been wanting to write some kind of rappy, but rock, like rock. And I that's all I had. I was like, that's cool. We go to lunch and we come back and I'm kind of still thinking about it. I'm like, I think we should write that song, even though we were, my label's like, can you please record the ones you already have written instead of writing some new ones? I was like, I can't help it. Now we're thankful it was just a God thing. And even if that song isn't, like gratitude or isn't the next how great is our God. What I think it does is it gives kids permission to write how God's called them to write. And uh, we're not after the biggest songs. We're after songs that are gonna give people freedom and permission so that when it ends with me, it doesn't end. These other kids are gonna go and then minister to the generation they're called to, to reach, right? So um, that was a really cool, really cool thing. And so one day it's rock and roll, next day it's R&B, next day it's country, next day it's singer songwriter, next day it's the traditional, what I guess that one guy would define as worship is a, a ballad, I don't know. So, yeah. Right. Uh, coming to Rock the Universe, I'm excited about Yeah, that. I can't wait. So, uh, tell me about how, what the added dimension of performing them live. Okay, so what's it like taking the song from the studio or radio and just hearing to live? And I have a great example of Phil and I were just on this arena tour. So there's eight to 12,000 people in the room most nights. <laughs> And the best analogy maybe I could come up with is, have you ever worked out by yourself? It's like easy to give up. You're like, all right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, three sets of 12, you know, bench pressing. And when nobody's watching, it's kind of easy to be like, all right, I, you know, on the third set, I got six or, you know, whatever. It's easy to give up. When you have people in the room, if you've ever worked out with a buddy, you push each other further. It's like this supernatural, weightlifting session. That's kind of how I feel like when you step in a room with thousands of people, it's like, no, I'm not gonna settle. Like, let's, let's go after more. And there is more in the presence of God. And especially when you're doing it night after night, it, it, and we're doing the same songs, when you get new people in the room who are going through other situations and there's new faith and there's, um, and there's always the person who's never heard of Jesus, right? Or is far from God. You get in the room with that many people, I think it becomes this like, let's go further, let's live stronger, his name higher, you know, that kind of thing. And so it's electric and there's nothing like it. Yeah. So you mentioned last year, kind of a whirlwind, and you've seen lots of success and so on. What's that been showing you about yourself throughout that season? Hmm. Um, I think that he's a God of family. Um, and that might be like an easy answer or like elementary. You would think maybe with the bigger rooms or the more success or if you, if you will. Dude, where I tend to see God most is in the green room. It's in my living room. By the green room, I mean like with my, my boys in the, in the back before the, the show starts or the worship night starts. Um, he's a God of family. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for collaboration, if it wasn't for family. Um, and all those people in that room that have taken me in and said, I see something special in your life. And I think, um, I think that uh, the kingdom looks like family. I think that's why he blesses it. And so, um, you know, the word for me is it would be for anybody probably um, winning an award or ha being able to s s sell some rooms out. That kind of thing is, is humility and purity of spirit. I love the scripture that says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. It's one of my favorite scriptures because I want to see God. I don't want there to come a show, a worship experience or a song I write where I don't see God in it and he's not present. And I think one of the most tragic things could be hosting a party for someone and he never showed up. I want to make sure God shows up every time we film a party. So.
Cool. All right. Thank you all. Have a great night.